Hello and welcome back and today we're going to talk about the QTS 5.1 beta we're going to do something of a deep dive into most of the new improvements and add-ons to this latest version of QNAP software there now real quick let's get it out the way the too long didn't read I really like it I'll be straight with you the QTS 5.1 feels like what QTS 5 should have been a lot of my complaints that I had about it some of them visual based a lot of them to do with features that felt like they could have you know used a little bit more time in the oven they've definitely been better real realized in 5.1 i do not think you should jump onto the beta if you have mission critical data and i will argue one of the things that i'm less keen on about it straight away is a lot of the messaging from qnap on this they're being very aggressive on some of the pages about getting people to download but of course you are still talking about a beta very very important there and i'm just seeing lots of different instances of being told that the beta exists and there's beta firmware and um, that i think they could maybe rein it in a little bit but overall the qts 5.1 beta I really like it. I think they've made improvements, certainly in terms of some of the user interface choices there. Um, a lot of the security updates had already been rolled into five, you know, because obviously the last year, year and a half of them has been something of a rocky climb in terms of security. But I will say that they've integrated on a lot of those things in the background and doubled down on some of them. So in this video, hopefully on the bottom, there'll be some timestamps there. We're going to go through as many of these as we can. Some, of course, we're not going to be able to dig into. Uh, we're going to be comparing them against another NAS running QTS 5, the latest version at the time of recording. We're going to be comparing some of those areas against QTS 5.1 to give some of the differences a little bit of resonance and actually be able to see it side by side. The other thing I'll add, again, is the things I'm not going to cover. So some of the new features of 5.1 really extend into what Drive Analyzer provides. For those that aren't aware, Drive Analyzer is a kind of drive health management tool that's constantly collecting um, kind of system, not system information, sorry, drive health information and access information there and is able to predict drive predicted failure so you can be more proactive about it. That is not a new feature that was rolled in quite a lot into QTS 5 already. And we're not going to be featuring that here. Um, the other thing is AMIZ Cloud, because that is kind of bigger than most of this video. A lot of these NAS providers are trying to move into this larger multi-site uh, monitoring there. And of course, it's almost certainly going to roll into, if not a subscription platform, then at least a light license platform. But again, that's not going to be unusual, as this is a far more enterprise-led thing. But we're not going to really talk about that too much in this video. We might refer to it a bit. But the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the passwordless login you saw me there when i stopped on that page um they've always had support of two-step authentication there uh this adds a new uh way into the mix for their platform they brought out their own authenticator tool now like a lot of you i'm sure when you heard about that it was oh great they're just bringing out their own authenticator i'll just stick it with a pile of the others this is more about it in reverse and something we're seeing a lot more on server platforms and it kind of reverses the logic of two-step two-factor authentication what i mean by that is instead of having to use a two-step authenticator that has like a 30 or 60 second timeout on a code that you have to enter what this does is rather than using a password to log into your system you have to use the tool on your phone <clears throat> within a limited time window to allow access so to put that into perspective, we can go in and put in our um, sub admin there. And as you can see, straight away, it's now going to give me the three minute warning to log into this system with this 3D code now. So this is unique to this three minutes. And you can cater this a little bit, but once you've set it up on your phone and synchronized the two, you'll go into the scanner tool there. You scan it, go in there. The lightning in my studio is not making that easy going. And there you go, it will log us directly in there. Now, I would have liked that to have been a little snappier. <coughs> we are on the LAN after all, but still I like having that option next to two-step and maybe factoring that in. See, so system admins have got a tool like that to go in. I'm not going to say this is going to, you know, it hasn't reinvented the wheel or anything, this tool, but I will say it's nice to have at least that authenticator tool that you could link to particularly high-profile admin accounts. Now, while we're doing that, I'm just going to log in to this other NAS here, the QTS5 NAS here, because some of the things we're going to go through in my massive list I've got here off camera um, is this is where we're going to see a lot of this comparison. So in terms of presentation, uh, not a lot has changed, frankly. It's exactly the same. They have improved a lot of the zoom there. So as mentioned in my reviews, where um, when we were sort of changing between 90 and 100% zoom, things seem to break a little bit. But I would say that the presentation, it feels... 
maybe the tiniest bit snappier. I've gone through the release notes, and there's lots of stuff about tightening in the background, but and lots of security stuff there. Uh, upgrading a lot of the security uh, that it's running on in order to maintain performance, but at the same time allow that authentication and security to maintain a high standard as possible. Again, I'm not. You know, it's really, it's, if it is there, it's more latency felt than it is actually measurably felt. Um, but still, the presentation of it's good. Now, on the subject of presentation, one area that I think is going to have a mixed reaction, but I'll tell you right now, I like, is how they've changed the storage manager. Now, in the past, when I would talk uh, about QNAP and their storage manager, I've praised it in the past for being a more graphically representative uh, user interface down. I think a lot of users liked that when you'd go to the discs. You'd this is the older device. You would with QTS five say older QTS five. This is the latest version. That was about I think seven days ago. It would show you the box there at the system. You could maybe see the M 2s if it's got M two slots inside. You could find out more about your RAID group. And I think this is one of those areas where it was quite counterintuitive sometimes, where it started graphical uh, for the you know uh, the less experienced user, and you could see more information now. Do you know, with this, I like what they've done, but I know not everyone's going to like it. I don't particularly like this screen, this default view screen. This needs something of an overhaul, if I'll be straight with you. But when it comes to the disk view, you've kind of got a bit of everything here. So on the bottom left, you've still got your little graphical representative tool here, which, by the way, feels a little snappier. But on top of that, you have a kind of... Uh, breakdown. I'm going to full screen that. I'm sorry if the bottom right of the screen is going to be blocked by my face. Um, this gives you a breakdown of every single slot that's inside the system and alongside that kind of its status, what it's doing, how it's monitored and a lot more information about the drive itself, particularly with regards to the manufacturer. Now, to put that into a little bit of perspective, if we go for this drive here, this is a WD drive that we've got. And as we can see, one of these WD drives, if I move down, there we go to this 8TB Pro drive, has WDDA on board. Now, that is WD's own approach, the Western Digital Device Analytics tool, their alternative to smart. We heard about um, Seagate and the Iron Wolf Health Management tool. Now you've got support of um, WDDA. This is something that's going to appear in a lot more NASIs moving forward to give you more information about the drives that you are monitoring. But what's quite nice is you can download these as reports uh, directly onto your local system if you choose. Now, with the upgrade on the drive uh, monitoring with regards to adding that WD stuff there and some of the uh, background tools for drive health, that is when we're moving into another little extra that I thought was going to roll out with um, to QTS 5, particularly when they were talking originally about DA Drive Analyzer being brought in, and that is Advanced Predictive Failure and reactive uh, behavior with this drive here what we can do is head up to the top go into manage free disks and from here we're able to select what we want to do with this available drive so for example setting it as an enclosure spare will mean that this drive will sit there and be on the background on the back foot waiting to be used now a lot of us might turn around and go well, that's just a hot spare, who cares? A hot spare is when a drive within the system is there ready and waiting for in the event of a RAID failure, a degradation, because one of the drives in the RAIDs fails, after that, it will take the hot spare and introduce it into the overall array and start rebuilding that RAID, which can take time and lower performance overall. Now, what makes this any different? Well, nice and simple, because this is to do with noticing the drive's gonna fail and then swapping the data over to the new drive before the RAID degradation. That's a big, big difference. And that's why things like the inclusive drive analyzer, like the inclusion of WD's drive management, and of course Seagate Ironwolf Health Management being rolled in, to have all of that information being rolled into the system is useful. Because with that, it will mean that if a drive starts showing those indicated signs of possible failure, down the line, it will start cloning the contents of that drive onto our new spare. It isn't just a hot spare. And again, there's more information on that with regard to the QTS 5.1 notes. How much of that is locked into the DA drive analyzer tool? I'm not so sure. I don't think it is. But again, don't quote me on that. And this is still the beta. Another feature that's been added into QTS 5.1 that's frankly I thought was already in there is native command queuing. That is what effectively gives SATA drives 
a little bit of a boost in terms of the performance that you can get out of them and once you because one of the big problems you have when you're dealing with SATA drives is uh, command queuing and when you're issuing instructions for read and write to the drive they are traditionally a great deal more linear and blocky in terms of blah 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 hence why when you're dealing with drives things are just slow with ssds having that much greater command of overall multiple uh command provide provisos in place so native command queuing something once again i thought was already on there has been added on there once you get to larger groups of drives and again you can apply this to all of them at once it's nice to see that as an addition included in there then you've got improvements to that really nice tool, QNAP's Q tier. For those that aren't aware, when you are creating a storage pool from within your QNAP system there, if you have different kinds of storage media, you've got SSDs, you've got hard drives, but moreover, you might have SAS-based SSDs, such as using the TSH973AX, or you're using systems that have got a lot more M2 slots than those, or you've got a combination of the three. Q tier has always been useful to be able to create uh, one storage pool pool that's got a combination of hard drives and ssds of varying types and merging them into one storage pool where the system learns and moves not copies like caching but moves storage media to more appropriate areas in this one pool that's built of a cold warm and um hot uh, storage tiered system inside and now qt allows you to take advantage of the three at once so that's the nvmes the sas and the sata drives all in one unfortunately i do not have a system here that has all three of those on board but the assignment of all three of them is very very straightforward and you can use it to create that ultimate storage pool without worrying about a capacity um, reduction that you would find in a normal traditional raid by merging it in that way. Yes, you could still use caching, but the improvements there now to have that three tier system into Q tier is going to be felt. Now we're seeing more and more QNAP systems rolling out with not only M2 uh, NVMe base being standard, but on top of that, a lot more of these systems having SAS ports there that can use either M2s via an adapter or U2 SAS drives or even just SAS drives in general being integrated in for the high performance benefits to be rolled into the single storage pool next up we've got to talk about it let's talk about security now again as mentioned in qts 5 you know the last 18 months two years of not being great for qnap in terms of security and they've been caught with their trousers down a few times there now they already integrated and upgraded a lot of the preset defaults in their system but they could always do more and in qts 5.1 it seems like they've um kind of let's be frank looked at technology and gone that sounds great i wonder if we can integrate it it may sound disingenuous but you know this is an industry filled with different players they're always going to be doing that to one another but i would say some of the uh preset integrations there and some of the stuff to do with delegation i'm finding quite interesting case in point when you go to the top menu they've now kind of upgraded some of the options there with regards to you the user having direct account control there to put that into perspective if we go back to this nas here uh, this is the qts5 nas we can see just the options there and the options with regards to amending your account there are fairly standard adding that two-step password changes issuing those ssh keys for individual apps and services that sort of thing now this has that but they've also added in the login and security section there a direct portal single window for managing just the login security there now we've already mentioned about the integration of passwordless access there we've also got the two-step authentication there and again you can adapt a lot of those settings quite nicely um, and you can apply those to other users as well but you've now got the log me out function the log me out function ultimately means that at the click of one button it will log you out of everything to do with your account in this system so if you're on multiple devices uh, logged in with that single account you can basically just cancel all of those and effectively disables access for those users and you can remove a lot of the authority as well as changing it and then you can change the forget password settings to be set to email access not just the reset there because a lot of users did complain when they were trying to reset the password on the system it seemed like being able to do it with the pin just locally and no other methodology didn't seem great now when it comes to uh, user access and security if we head into the control panel there and make our way into the users i would say i quite like some of the new system settings with regards to managing other users so case in point the delegated administration 
I would say I really like it, but it does have one inherent failing that I hope they uh, amend when 5.1 rolls out. Um, so what this means is, for example, if you're running a system here and uh, temporarily you want to give um, certain admin powers to individual users. So in the case of these users, I've created a bunch of users on this system and all of these users are all within preset groups. So if it was a business, I've gone with like sales, marketing, HR. There may be a temporary measure where security, for example, may want to give access to certain surveillance uh, tools or surveillance recordings to another member of another team as you know uh, proof of delivery or anything kind of on the local settings delegated administration means that if you are if you are an admin user that has certain powers and abilities on the nas such as shared folder management and uh, roles within the operation of your business you're able to give them that control so for example shared folder management you can temporarily give that access to say chris and barbara and then boom apply they can now have access same goes for system monitoring to give that level of access so again we can give that to emma click apply and then in the permission viewer you're able to oversee who has access to what even going as far as to allow you to download a report in order to see all of that information in one single report pdf i say pdf it's actually a csv and you can find out more about the role the rules and what you can and cannot do without delegation of rules but one thing i will say that i'm kind of disappointed isn't here is a time limit because there's, there's never really been a shortage of means for me to go as an admin user into this person's account here, say Barbara's, change um, a lot of their account information, change what they can see, change which folders they've got access to. There's never really been a limitation in order to do that. This just makes it a lot quicker to do. What I wish was on here is a time limit. I would like to give that person access to these rights for, say, one hour. I don't want to have to manually go in and remove. Maybe that is a feature that's on there, but I checked. I didn't quite find it on there. So, again, as much as I like that delegated rule thing, I really, really wish there was the option of setting a time limit or a date limit on that level of access and not rely on a system admin to go in and remove that delegated access manually. Another thing that's been included in QTS 5.1 that, again, I sort of thought was already there is the option to remove the system being findable on the QFinder application. That is the app you use when you want to uh, search the local area network and find the NAS. And what this does is just effectively remove it to be pinged that way. So you'll have to actually have the local IP for it there or going with your remote access credentials, which again, you can set up with local security. But when I went in, it isn't available on QTS5. So I'm kind of surprised. I'm glad it's there. It was just another one of those features I kind of assumed was already in QTS. Now, one of the areas that QNAP got quite a lot of stick for in the last 18 months to two years was to do with their approach to firmware updates there. Now, this is always going to be a tricky line for a lot of brands, and this doesn't just reach out to QNAP, by the way, and it is to do with getting users to install the latest updates because a lot of us i'm still using windows 10 you can keep offering me windows 11 microsoft until you're blue in the face i'm not ready yet a lot of us will not hop on updates that quickly so there is this inherent difficulty sometimes relaying the importance of an update to an end user in a way that it needs to be integrated during the whole deadbolt issue that one of the biggest things they got wrong was, uh, well, at least for a lot of users that weren't impacted by Deadbolt, was that they effectively pushed an automated update onto their users. Now, we spoke to QNAP about this, and they're saying it wasn't pushed so much as certain updates on the QNAP NAS that were set for updates were triggered by this because it was an important enough update. But unfortunately, it did seemingly force a lot of systems to automatically restart there. So there's always going to be this difficulty between the brand and the end user for getting updates installed when you don't want your system to have to power down, when you don't want to have to take the time to go through release notes, and more importantly, you don't want to install updates that may break something that was already working, and that can apply well outside the boundaries of NAS. Now, what they've done is change the formula in terms of how and what you update. What that means is rather than saying i want all updates i want unnecessary updates i want only the sort of necessary ones the big ones but not the small ones now they've changed a lot of the language and the messaging there to be towards critical updates quality updates the latest updates and by that um what they're trying to effectively do there and you can change a lot of it within the notification rules as you can see there 
it allows these updates to be a lot more specific to the end user. So if you want the updates for new features, you can have that. If you only want security fix updates, you can do that. Now, they did already kind of do that. This is about them changing how you um, are interacting with that menu. So here's how it looks in QTS 5. And as you can see, you've got those updates there and it's tick box based. So you can choose between them. But now it can be just a straight choice of what your priorities are. Does that solve the update issue? Probably not. But it's at least making another attempt at trying to re-establish how and when, and more importantly, the importance to you how uh, when to update. I still think this is slightly at odds with the language being used around the beta. I'm still not a big fan of the arguably slightly more aggressive nature of the update installations there, given that a beta is meant to be working out kinks and bugs. I wouldn't trust it with my live data, but still nonetheless, I like that they have tried to reapproach the subject of firmware updates there. And actually on the subject of firmware updates and indeed updates to apps, I do like something they've done with regard to the timing of updates. This may seem like an incredibly minor detail, and it really is in the grand scheme of things, I guess, but I like that now when it comes to updates within individual apps, there's now a better control of how and when they will be rolled out there. Now, this isn't really new. You've always had the option to only install certain updates, whether you want them to be automatic or whether you just want to see a notification. But now, uh, I believe the default option there will be to at least install the required updates to individual applications, which is a good update. And on top of that, having uh, the time management there for the notification so when you want either the notification or the update to take place, you can now set it up at downtime periods of day rather than during uptime. Because that was a lot of the time the reason a lot of people did not allow default updates because they didn't have a great deal of control over when an update would be pushed automatically and therefore possibly change or reboot an application when it's in active use, especially if we're talking surveillance or virtual environments there. Next up, of course, they have enabled SMB multi-channel now in QTS 5.1. Uh, that is ultimately the ability to directly connect into multiple network ports on your QNAP NAS there and take advantage of things once again, like automatic failover, of course, but mainly we're doing it for performance. It's a much more effective way rather than using link aggregation, which requires a switch in the middle and allows that much, much greater performance threshold to be attained. And with lots of QNAP NASs arriving, I'm pointing at a NAS that's ever so slightly off shot um, with things like uh, not only lag supported there are multiple ports at 2.5 and 5 GB and in 10 GB on some cases with multiple network cards arrived. QNAP in terms of all of the network providers at this level in the world of NAS are probably in the best position to deliver on SMB multi-channel. Uh, with, with regards to accessing it you go straight to the control panel there and boom it's one simple option and you can configure those multiple ports. So for example in this I've got a 10G port and a couple of 2.5Gs and binding them together as well as binding them by the way with the virtual stuff is very very good and again it's largely autonomous hence it's huge desirability versus that of standard uh, port trunking there an option that is still not available in QTS 5 and that was one of those I thought it would roll out with 5 now for those of you who have been following of course DSM rolling out there 7.2 beta there a lot of the features and services that are in there are already available here such as uh, volume encryption and uh, talking about a write once read many are already available in the QUTS uh, platform there so a lot of the things that were being added here in QTS I would argue most of the things that QNAP, I, if I didn't already think they had, they should have had by now, and I'm pleased to see them. But this is why at the beginning I was saying that QTS 5.1 feels like QTS 5 should have been. For example, going into the file station here, they've made a couple of additions in that. And again, we can roll in and find it here on the page. They've done two integrations there to do with one, uh, a kind of integrating Q search a great deal better into searching your NAS. So when you're going to be utilizing the Q search option, if you install it there, it's going to do a, a much better job of searching only the files and the breakdowns and the breadcrumbs, but some of the documents themselves. They've also added that recent upload, open, deleted, to give you a bit of legacy information there in terms of files that have been accessed or added recently, something that was long, long, long overdue as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you're migrating data around the NAS, so for example, if we go ahead and recover, uh, we'll move some data over. So if we go ahead and move some of these files here, 
onto another area of the NAS. We'll go ahead and copy those and then we'll move them into another area of the NAS. We'll go and dump those into one of our many uh, um, files there if we go for that there and paste it in. They've now integrated a much better um, overview here of files being sent with a much better percentage bar and of just a better visual representation of files being moved around the NAS. It still is a little more techy than it is user friendly. It's definitely, I would argue, more desktop Windows friendly than it is going to be tablet or mobile friendly. In that case, I'd recommend the apps. But there's still nice little upgrades in how you manage files and services on the NAS in QTS 5.1 that I'm quite pleased with. Which leads us back to the things that we can't really show you in this video without a far more aggressive setup there. For example, we already mentioned Drive Analyzer rolling out some new improvements integrated with 5.1 and that AMIZ cloud overview service there from QNAP that's going to roll in that multi-site monitoring there of Network Edge, as you can see there on screen. There's also the integrated support of improved AI M2 adapters. We talked about the Google TPU and that Coral and stuff like that. This is kind of the next gen of that and the integration of those into QTS 5.1 for things like surveillance uh, and virtual machine stuff and let's face it AI is the topic of the day and it's going to not be too long I'm sure before we start talking about hosting um, you know real kind of modern edge AI on your local NAS server using this and the integration of those does show a very pro promising move in that direction by QNAP to support these new and improved AI add-ons to which are both affordable and tremendously powerful in order to take advantage of whether it is with QNAP applications or third party. But overall, QTS 5.1 feels like what QTS 5 should have been. And we will do a full, full review when it actually lands. If I had to give any kind of you know feedback, if QNAP, if you are watching this number one, you need to be clearer about this being a beta, for Christ's sake. This is a beta and I don't think beta is being shouted loud enough and I think it is very aggressive in the messaging there about people upgrading when you are talking about an unfinished area of storage there also the delegation maybe you can, guys can prove me wrong but the delegation not having a time limit feature on it the idea that I can give one of my many users uh, the abilities of an admin on the hoof I would like to add a time limit on that or some checks and balances there I like the uh, integrated um, security tool there. I quite like the having their own password login there rather than just you know piggybacking on an existing two-step. Although they do, of course, include that. I quite like having that passwordless login there in the background. And a little configuration around it is still quite nice as well. The fact that you can double-step that as well in a number of ways. And I think QTS 5.1 is shaping up nicely. I just wish some of these things had maybe been rolled out into five and maybe left five to last a little bit longer. But this has been a brief, I say brief, look at the timestamp, a overview of the QTS 5.1 beta. And I will look forward to installing it on bigger, badder NAS uh, when we do the full review for it. So do stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, whether you're going to upgrade to 5.1 yet, or you're going to sit there and wait it out and let this thing spend a bit more time in the oven. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.